Hey, guess what? It's Monday night. Finally. Yeah. I've been waiting weeks for a Monday night. I know. You've been gone for three weeks now. So we're we're back finally. I'm a little a little rusty. rusty. Oil can. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, so it's voiceover body shop time, and uh, tonight our guest is Cat Cressida, who uh, does everything. And physically here. And she's physically in the studio, the best, which is always good. That's kind of guest. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we've got a little bit of tech. We'd love to get your questions about tech. And, of course, you'll be able to ask questions of Kat as well. So stay tuned. we got lots to talk about here on VoiceOver Body Shop coming up right now. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers. With a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success, the VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. All right. That was an exciting opening to the show, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so we had a, we actually had to take a little hike to produce that. For three years, we've a been trying hike. to do this. Yeah, a little bit of a hike. Uh, you know, we've uh, been wanting to do a shot from behind the Hollywood sign for mm -hmm. three years. And we could never get our my drone to do it. We nearly took some people out over at the <laughs> yes. over at the observatory. Yes. Uh, but uh, we got our, our drone pilot, Corey, showed up and we're like, well, what's the fastest way there? Well, as you can see, here we are uh, <laughs> going up the, the this large precipice. Now it looks like we're just climbing up a trail here. Yeah. But as, as you'll see, it uh. This is this is what was called the wishing uh, tree trail. That's right. Which is the the farthest. Uh -huh. It's it's as the crow flies the easiest way. I think it's Mount Burbank. Is that I what it is? I believe that's what we're heading to. Yeah, that's what and they call so that. as you can see, we're you can't even see us anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's a big mountain, and uh, well, there we go. go back, yeah, going, keep going, keep going, going. keep going, because going. you got to see you you climb all the way up to the top, and then. We went all the way to the top of that saddle and all, all the, the way, way across, across that saddle, ridge all over the way to, to the Hollywood right sign. Right about there. Yeah. Right there was where we had to stop. That that yeah. was, it was a, yeah. a 1.6 miles of craggy single track. And up and down, mostly up. Yeah. It and, was quite epic. And, yes. And of course, every time we would ask somebody, um, I know we're here somewhere. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Making an edit. There we go. All right. So every time we would ask somebody, are we getting there? Oh, yeah, you're close. That was like on that going up that first hill. Right. They were you saying know? you're close to climbing the first part of the trail. Right. They didn't know we were going, going to the Hollywood, Hollywood side. side. <laughs> they, yeah. could, they just said you're close to the top. We're like, yes. Right. And then we get up there. There's a sign that says Hollywood sign this way, 1.2 more miles. Like, hmm. Which 1.2 miles, not a big deal. No. Unless you're doing what we were doing. Right. It's basically scrambling. That's yeah. It was up and down. It was it was interesting. It was but pretty awesome. We didn't walk back that way though. No, no. We took the road down and then got an Uber. We did back learn to... something about drones and high tension lines. Yes, 
We watched Corey fly his drone under those high tension wires. I don't know if you noticed, but it didn't like that very much. Uh, there's a lot of magnetic interference coming off of those high tension lines, and the, the compass in the drone would just make the drone stop moving completely. And it was just a miracle that he got that thing back. You know? knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's he's a pro, but that was All a right. blast. All right, well, on to voiceover, and it's now time for... VoiceOver Body Shop presents the VOBS VoiceOver Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. All righty, here is the VoiceOver Extra News for September 17th. 2018, vetting VO agents. Do you need agents to succeed in voiceover? For many of us, yes. But is any agent the right one for you? For most of us, no. It's important to vet or carefully research an agent or agency before seeking representation there. Mm -hmm. During our break, the last, what felt like two months, uh, <laughs> VoiceOver Extra posted an informative series by Tom Deere on VO agents, with part one delving into how to know you're actually ready to seek an agent or agents, and part two detailing how to vet them. Tonight, let's highlight what to look at when vetting an agent. Are they franchised? In this case, the term franchised refers to the agent who's licensed by the state in which they operate and has been officially approved by the SAG after a union. How many voice talents are on their roster? Too many may mean too little or no personal attention. Mm. Three, which markets do they cover? For instance, New York City, Los Angeles, Dallas, you know, that kind of thing. You need to know. Number four, do you have to sign with them? Some require it, some don't. Five, do you have to be exclusive with them? Again, some require it, some don't. Six, where do they get their auditions from? They get them from certain P2P sites that may be an ethical issue. Watch out for that. Seven, are the auditions union, non-union, or both? Eight, are the auditions online, in person, or both? Hmm. Do they require a commission from just the gigs they book you or for all of the gigs you book everywhere? Some do, some don't. Unless they are truly managing your career and you're booking gobs of great gigs with them, I wouldn't go with the all gigs everywhere agent. And 10, do they require you to take classes with certain coaches before they will represent you? And finally, a major league red flag. <laughs> uh, do you have to pay any listing fees to be represented? Remember, you don't work for your agents, you work with your agents. This series and hundreds more helpful articles for your voiceover career is available now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Mm -hmm. All right. Getting an agent is not the easiest thing in the world. But I'll bet our guest tonight, Kent, will be able to tell us a little bit about her experience okay. with getting an agent. Yeah, we'll learn her journey to, the, to agent yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what's up in tech this week? Well, the latest thing that I've done personally was putting up a review. And I did get a review posted for the Mixer Face, which, you know, you guys maybe are a little tired of hearing about it by now. We've talked about it a lot. We've got one here in the box. This thing was kind of like a legend, a.k.a. vaporware, for a really long time. Yeah. We knew it was coming. We finally got it. And I got my review up. And if you head over to George the Tech's YouTube channel, it's George the Tech, um, you'll check out my brand of a review. My reviews are not just like, it does this, it does that, it has these specs. I actually do run through the use of the unit, how it works. It's even more of a tutorial than a review, but mm -hmm. you can go check that out at your leisure. Um, pretty impressive little piece of kit, I'd have to say. Um, what else is new? Uh, in terms of the big thing I saw everybody talking about, all the, the techie people especially, was... Waves plugins bundle. It's the new platinum. They, it's every plugin ever released by Waves for only 199 bucks or something like that. Everybody was going crazy about it. And the question is, did you go buy it? I didn't buy it. No, neither did I. <laughs> um, I mean, what do I need it for? If, well, if, we'll talk about that in the next segment. We can too. talk about that later. Yeah. But if if you're producing, fine. But folks, if you're a voice actor, you've got yourself 
good equipment, your microphone's set up correctly, your room acoustics are good. The guys, the, the gals, the people that need a thing like that Waves Platinum Bundle, producers, engineers, people that are paid to have all of the latest gadgets, bells and whistles, and have every plug-in known to man, those are the folks who are going to benefit from something like that. And I have to say, in my little experience working with Wave Apps, um, or not Wave Apps, Wave Apps is, a, is my accounting software, sorry, Waves plugins, um, is that their licensing system can be a little cool uh, vocabulary word, either arcane or draconian. <laughs> One of those two words might be the right word to do. Anyway, it can be frustrating to to deal with their their the their licensing system sometimes. Does it ask you for their for your for your firstborn or something like that? Yeah, there's a lot of login information, and I just I've, if all the plugins I have dealt with the third party ones, people seem to have more trouble with Wave plugins than anything else. Also, another big plugin that was released. Uh, funnily enough, the day that was released was the day that Waves announced their super mega deal. Isotope RX-7 came out last week. Dan and I were hiking a mountain instead of going to a clinic <laughs> about... We were going to go to a clinic over uh, across town. It's we just, needed to go to another clinic afterwards. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm glad you're okay today. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, but we were supposed to go to see a nice live demo with a producer uh, of Isotope RX-7. We didn't get to do it, but thanks to the internet, that whole demo was recorded. And it was done over at West Lake Pro Audio. So if you go to their website, you can find, I think, an hour and a half long live demo of Isotope RX-7. I don't know enough about it quite yet to say, go out, you got to have it, you got to have it. I don't think quite yet, but we'll let you know. We're going to spend a little bit of time experimenting with the demo and see if it's worth buying into it. Cool. All righty. Well, we got lots more to talk about in the tech stuff in our next segment, and Cat Cressida will be with us in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Meow. Snails like it, too. VOBS is still on? Seriously? All righty. How do you think about your voiceover career? Have you ever thought things like, I'm too old to get booked? I need a better mic if I want to compete with the pros. I hate auditioning because I never book anything. I need to join the union as soon as I can. I'm not good enough to be doing this professionally. I'm just faking it. Sound familiar? Well, VO2GOGO's got a way to destroy those beliefs once and for all. It's a 21-day journey via live video called Believe 2018. It's going on right now, and you can jump on board and change things for the better. Get the success you want by destroying those limiting beliefs and replacing them with powerful, productive, enabling beliefs. And closer, and get closer and closer to the success you deserve. Here's the URL. Go. Join. VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash believe. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. It's ridiculously cheap, and it's ridiculously effective. Once again, go to vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Cat Crescent is coming up in just a few minutes. But it's time to talk tech. Because when Dan and George talk tech, people listen for eh? some odd reason. Yeah. Um, 
But if you really need help with your studio, there's only two places on the face of the earth you really need to go. Because we see lots of people saying, yeah, I can fix your studio or something like that. Said person, I fix a lot of those people's studios, by the way. Yes. The I, ones where they were they somebody helped else. by somebody else. Right. Yeah, somebody who says, I'm an audio <laughs> expert, and what they do is they install speakers for music. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like, doesn't make them an audio expert. <laughs> you know, the, a home studio is a very, very specific, unique environment. It is, yeah. And you need somebody who knows what those, that's all about. Someone who's been in a mm. lot of closets and a lot of booths. And oh, man, a lot of closets. A lot of closets. It's amazing what some people wear. <laughs> but um, And you get to see it all. But mostly that's the best place to record. Uh, but we can teach you how to do that. And if you want to work with George and have him set up a voiceover palace for you, where do they go? You can head right over to georgethetech.com. Or if you like those really short, geeky URLs, that's georgethe.tech. And uh, I've got all sorts of services that you can schedule, or you can just book right on the website and send me your files. I'll send you back the results from stacks to presets, sound checks, all that kind of stuff. And Dan, you do something kind of similar over at your site. Yes, you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, and I'm there, and... Uh... Yeah, I do a lot of the same things. Uh, we can do house calls. Uh, I can work with you with over Zoom. Make sure that your audio is sounding right. Uh, and on my website, you can click on the Specimen Collection Cup and send me a, a sample of your raw audio uh, for 25 bucks, and I will analyze it, and we will see if you need to have a little help in getting it sounding like you're not in a tube or in your bathroom. <laughs> And amazingly, Hollow Boxy Studios is our specialty. That's what we do. We fix them, and you sound as good as anybody else. Thanks for clarifying. Fixing them is our specialty. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. Setting them up right in the first place, we also do. Some yeah. other people, eh. Anyway, so uh, check those out. Well, you know, I got an email from somebody this week. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, I've been working with you. I got that new AKG mic that you said I should probably get. Now I need you to tune it in. So I can sound terrific. I immediately wrote back, could you define terrific? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's what he wants you to figure out. Right. right. It, it's like, again, folks, the idea of your home voiceover studio is not to make you sound terrific. It's to make you sound like you. You as you exist in the environment in which you record, and which is what you and I do, is we get that environment to just record your voice and not the sound of traffic going by and not the sound of helicopters yeah. going over and yeah. not the sound of your dog barking or on the, the nails on the floor. <laughs> We've heard that one before. Yes. Uh, so, you know, there's really not a lot of things that really need to be done if you're a good voice actor because voice acting is all about being an actor and mm -hmm. understanding the script. Yeah. We just make sure that your audio sounds the way it's supposed to sound. There's no enhancements. There's no equipment. There's nothing out there that's going to make the difference between you getting the job and somebody else, especially on an audition. It really is all about getting it done right in the first place, so you have to do as little as possible and leaving an engineer the space to use all those Waves plugins. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> we do, I mean, when I set up a booth... 80 to 90% of it is definitely mic placement, room acoustics, mic technique, not having a junky mic, having, you know, decent equipment. You know, not, you don't need to spend crazy money here. Equipment that's going to capture clean audio. But after that, that last 10%, that's where some processing will come into play sometimes. And for, especially for doing auditions, I will really look into creating a processing preset of sorts maybe a couple of different things in a stack or a rack or whatever your software is using to just give it a little spit shine, especially for auditions. Right. You know, it's the thing is I've told a lot of voice actors at this point to put processing on their auditions, right or wrong. That's what's been being done now a lot for the last four or five, six years. So when folks who work with me for the first time ask me that question, I had a fellow, fellow ask me today named Freddie. He, he said, do, do I put this processing on my additions? And I said, well, first of all, our motto, if it sounds good, it is good. Right. But even then, if your levels are 
you know, a little on the low side because you didn't normalize or there's a lot of peaks in the a audio. A lot of dynamics. A lot to of it. dynamics, yeah. If right. you're doing animation stuff, those dynamics are going to make the overall volume lower and it's not going to grab attention quite as well. So a little bit of the right compression, a little bit of processing, a little bit of limiting in the right amount. Just a little bit. It's like mm. cooking. It's just the right amount it's of It's not spice. enhancement. It's correction. Yeah. It's, some of you, I think you shake the salt pepper, uh, salt shaker, and the lid falls off by mistake. Yeah, and, and, it's good enough. Yeah. And pour some sriracha in there yeah, while yeah. you're at it. No, just a, just a dash yeah. of this and dash of that. And, and that can give you that little bit of a you know, a little bit of an edge, but that audio has got to sound good first and right. processing can't fix everything. Exactly. One of the tools we use, and we're going to show you now on DAW View 2018. Look at this. There it is. That's a spectrogram. That folks. is a spectrogram. And that's all for tonight, folks. <laughs> um, Bye. Yeah. <laughs> what now people ask us, what is a spectrogram? What is this that we're looking at here? Well, this is I, a lot of people don't understand that our voice exists at different frequencies and while we're all used to looking at you're used waveform, to looking at the waveform view right? right yeah which is sort of the two-dimensional version right. it's sound or volume of sound over time right and but but what this is is a graphic representation of the different volume of different frequencies mm -hmm. you follow that all right so, for example, down here, this these are the lower these are the lower frequencies down here, mm -hmm. and these are the high frequencies up here. So, if you're you're if you're looking at this, you'll realize that you know, if something is really bright, bright yellow and an isotope uses pretty much the same color scheme. This will show you if you're too loud or where certain mm -hmm. anomalies may exist. Yeah. And, and I can see on here there are a number of things that are going on. You can see consistent, there's music in there, and you can see uh, up here there's uh, these these lines. Come on, I know you're there. Did it freeze on me? There, oh, it, there is. it is. Okay. You can see these different lines, different striations. Right. You can see lip smacks. You can see all sorts of stuff that you can't normally see on this normal waveform uh, thing. Now, sometimes you can see it if you stretch it out a little bit. So the question is, how much time should one as an as voice actor spend cleaning up that stuff? Cleaning up and spending their time in spectra view or spectrogram or whatever versus, you know, is, is it worth spending a lot of time in there? How much do it, you use it? Uh, every day. Yeah. But then again, I've been doing it for, for 10 years, so, so I know exactly. I, yeah, I know exactly what I'm looking for. It, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it. But what do you once, use it for the most? Uh, a lot of times for deep breathing or just highlighting a breath and taking it down for, say, 15 dB or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Or if there's a lip smack or if it's really good at taking out some of the lower frequencies and really getting a good idea of your noise floor. Mm -hmm. Because in, in empty spots, you'll see how low uh, a rumble might be. If yeah. it's below your voice, because our voice exists somewhere between say 90 hertz and say 15 uh, 15,000 hertz yeah. or 15, 15 kilohertz mm -hmm. and if there's a noise that is below that that's usually going to do it mm -hmm. okay are we still on here yeah we are it's just our little monitor is, is being, oh, okay. uh, throwing a tantrum oh okay it's working all right that's good to know all right so Use the spectrogram. You got to learn it. It's you know, Isotope has a great one. Uh, yeah. I was fixing somebody's studio over the weekend, and they had there was air conditioning on or something. This band, this dark band at sixty hertz. It was really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you can just zero it in and just take it out. Speaking really of cool. like crazy like bands of noise that are just throughout the whole thing. Yeah. When I was over at uh, a studio today, when the door to the booth was open, there was this super super low frequency standing wave you could yeah. almost hardly hear it you more felt it than anything right when you shut the door it went away it was like it was like it was the door opening was allowing the sound to slip into the booth and then the booth was acting as a resonator making it even louder oh, it was so weird and we were, i couldn't figure i mean it was really low it was probably like 20 or 30 hertz Wow. That, so I couldn't figure it, out. No one's going to hear that. Only your yeah, dog's going to hear that's, that. That's the thing. But if you're in the booth, you you like, you like almost feel it. And mm. you're trying to like not con trying to concentrate, and you hear that. And that sound can be really rough. And 
I went to another studio in Sherman Oaks, and I heard a similar sound in their studio. Hmm. So one was in Toluca Lake, one was in Sherman Oaks. Something descending on the valley Is there a sonic attack here. going on here? Oh, it's the Cubans. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bizarre. Attacking a diplomats, now they're attacking voice actors. I mean, you can high-pass filter that kind of stuff out, but right. if it's actually in your ears when you're recording, it's tough. That, that'll do it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Enough tech for one night. It's time Moving to get on. to our guest in just a couple of minutes, so stay tuned. Kat Kressler will be with us right after these important messages. She's over there. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Hey, everybody, my good friends over at Source Elements. They're still sending us money. And you know why? Because you guys apparently are going to go buy their software, which we really appreciate. They make all kinds of cool stuff, one of those things being Source Connect. And Source Connect is the tool for you if you're a studio, if you have a home voiceover studio, or if you travel a lot as a voice actor, and you have to maintain connection to your clients all around the world. So it's something that can be used on the road or in your own home studio. It's competitive with many other technologies. It was born out of a necessity to replace dying technology, aging technology such as ISDN. And it is definitely something that's caught on big time in the professional studio world. So if you want to give it a try... Start demoing it today. You can get a free trial for 15 days. You don't have to have one of those little iLock USB key thingies you've heard about for Source Connect Standard. Only need that for Pro. Go give it a try. Try it out. Test it. Do an echo loop and listen to yourself or connect to a friend or support and see what it's like to work real time with other studios. Go check it out. And we'll be right back with Cat and Dan right after this. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Cat Cressida is everywhere, from national flight commercials, animation, video games, trailers, promo, and even celebrity replacement work. We'll talk about that. Cat does it all, and she'll, and she's here to talk to us about her career and how to find your niche. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to have you here. <laughs> now, you, you do an awful lot of stuff, but... My first question is always, because not everybody's from here, where are you from originally? And, and we'll talk a little bit about how you got into where you are. So, yeah. where are you from? Well, originally, uh, was was here for two seconds, born, <laughs> and then immediately shipped off to Chicago, um, which is a fascinating story, because my dad was in advertising and, oh, wow. and ended up in New York for uh, some of my formative years, and a lot of... Over uh, sleepaway camp, always in upstate New York. So, and a lot of Ooh. Broadway. Ooh. Uh, upstate, like like Hudson Valley, upstate, or um, sort of like Ramapo up Catskills, up, exactly. Oh, okay, yeah, that All whole right. area, the Bush Belt. <laughs> um, and then back to Los Angeles for high school, and then shot up to UC Berkeley for college. UC Berkeley. Yeah. See now, a lot of good actors, and and we've had a lot of good actors on this show. Yes, you have. Uh, they all went to good schools, whether they went to study acting or not. I mean, <laughs> so, some of them went for medical school and somehow and ended, ended up, up the, as actors. Yeah. We're still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> uh, but uh, but did you study uh, acting and theater at Berkeley? Or Yes, I managed to slip. As, as, as I was relaying to you guys, there was big battles about what I was going to college for. Um, Your parents were just thrilled about, I thrilled. want to be an actor. Yes, that's what we want to spend our money on for someone going to college. But um, fortunately, I got a, 
a very interesting uh, offer from UC Berkeley, which did not have a strong theater department or film department at the time, um, but I got a scholarship. So I kind of won that. So I was able to go up there and I double majored with a minor. So I covered every base, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the, the primary one was sort of uh, stagecraft, technical, behind the scenes towards stage managing, lighting, sound, all of that stuff. Ah, so, that, so theater that management is Yeah, essentially... behind the scenes, all the crafts for actually being uh, in theater, mm -hmm. just because I, I really loved it and then got some practical degree stuff along with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So did you like start right into acting, and uh, or did you? Was there another path you took? That's a very good leading question. That's no, why I, I asked. I, it. <laughs> I had a very interesting uh, sort of weird moment when I graduated after years of training, and uh, Shakespeare and summer stock and all the good stuff that you're supposed to do leading up to uh, hopefully getting into career in acting. I kind of chickened out. Oh, <laughs> magical. Now, now we're right at home. Um, are balloons going to set off? Or no, no, no. Daytime we're good. We're fireworks? Good. I know George can do it all. <laughs> um, so, no, I actually went into the other side of the business first. I had a couple of summers during college, both as a Disneyland cast member and also as a um, assistant production coordinator for a couple of TV movies. And that led to me getting an offer to join one of the top three agencies as a sort of a trainee back when that was like a big prestige, you know, get into the mailroom, dispatch, land on a desk, and uh, became a, an, basically a junior agent and then an agent for two seconds representing screenwriters. So that's, that was my first career in Hollywood. Representing screenwriters. So screenwriters, helping, yeah. helping them get... Land gigs. their gigs. Right, okay. So. Pitching them, developing the scripts with them, a right. lot of pitch... A lot of pitch meetings, a lot of that behind-the-scenes yeah, yeah. stuff. Screenwriting is a, an amazing art in itself. It's incredible. Yeah. so it's Really, really incredible. And it's really fun, too. They have great longevity. You know, they really, if, if they're good. So it's really fun to see people who started out, like, on a TV series, now seeing them in feature films, having gotten their first big feature produced. That's really Very cool. cool. So how did you get into acting and then voice acting? So uh, initially, right as I kind of made it to the agent level, I realized, this was at 25, I was a pisher, um, way too young to be doing some of the stuff that, that the pressures, you know, at a major agency. And I kind of felt like on a gut level, I should, since I had all that training <laughs> and fought for years to get it, that I should at least try acting and see um, how that felt. And I really didn't think I would succeed. Honestly, I kind of went into it thinking, okay, I'll get it out of my system, go on the audition circuit, fail miserably, and at least I'll, I won't look back when I'm, you know, 50 and go, God, I never gave myself a shot. Um, but weirdly enough, it was right at this perfect storm time, right when Friends had come out uh, in the late 90s, and there was suddenly a burst of need for people sort of in their early 20s. And it was finally at that turning point where your looks, you didn't have to be a drop-dead stunning model. Um, or even, you know, Hollywood's version of Average Girl, which is Drop Dead Stunning, but with glasses on. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, I actually was able to book a bunch of sitcoms and worked with uh, Dick Van Dyke on Diagnosis Murder a bunch of times as a guest oh, star. Cool. And even on, I was on the last uh, season of Murder, She Wrote with Angela Lansbury, which was a big thrill. Yeah. I couldn't shut up about Sweeney Todd. She was thrilled that someone was <laughs> on the set talking about Sweeney Todd. So that was... I did about three years of that. And then I kind of realized that as much as I, it was thrilling and cool and getting to be with all these, you know, acting opposite people I'd really admired, I wasn't really cut out for sitting on a set for 18 hours. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. So much yeah. of that. Yeah. And I, I, I think it was from having come from both UC Berkeley, where you're constantly working to get towards your degree out in four years, and also then um, being on the agent side of things, I just couldn't, I wanted to be doing more. And it was really hard for me to be told, sit in your honey wagon for 14 hours, we'll call you. And we didn't have home computer, you know, this is this was like late 90s, so I probably would be a lot easier these days. Because yeah, <laughs> there's a lot you can do. Like, yeah, okay. But back then you just kind of had your flip phone and, uh, and not very much else to do other than flirt with grips, eat a lot of craft 
craft services. Read and Glamour magazine. And yeah. <laughs> hey, what about the sound guy? Do you flirt with the sound guy? Absolutely. The boom guy? Absolutely. I, I, I wanna, yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of flirtation back then. So, I mean, it was it was great experience, and I was really grateful that I had this sort of burst of, of bookings. Um, but really glad to have. And then I, right around there, I was dating someone who was doing a cleanup art for Disney. Ooh. And he knew how passionate I was about Disney parks and Disney animation. And I, I was always imitating the various Disney uh, females from mostly from the classics, mm -hmm. you know, Wendy and Alice. And he was like, why don't you go into voiceover? And I didn't know. It's amazing. But of course, back then, it wasn't nearly as much in the spotlight, nor as talked about. It really was a whole separate world. And um, and I really didn't know anything about it other than that I knew that the agency that I'd been an agent at had had a, a voiceover department strictly for, uh, it was separated out, it was segregated out, celebrities weren't doing it yet. And I uh, took my first workshop and went, oh my God, this is, I can act and not have to worry about my lipstick every time and my hair and it was it was really awesome. I mean, that sounds brilliant. Awesome. Well, but it, it was really liberating the way a lot of people say that it was. And that's kind of how I got into so it. So you took a, I take it you took a workshop or two to, to learn learn the, the, the secrets of the trade? I did. Sue Blues. Ah. Awesome animation workshop. And uh, Kalmanson and Kalmanson voice caster. I mean, it really kind of went on the little circuit. Yeah. That was uh, really, really, you know, amazing and solid back then. There was so, so many great people that were teaching those and got really fortunate on some of the people that I uh, took classes with. And then, again, it, I, I feel like my heart, I have tremendous compassion for people breaking into it now because it was a very different time. And I feel like, and I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but I feel like if I had tried to break in now back you know, with what I had back then, it would be so much more challenging. I feel like that. Well, it's a lot more competition. Now. A lot more competition from all over and all different, you know. Um, and uh, and it's still, I mean, there was tremendous, tremendous voiceover talent back then that I was just in awe of. But at least I was able to kind of get, you know, signed to a small agency and then work my way up. And first few gigs were literally on what we called CD-ROM games. CD-ROM games. Remember those? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember those quite well. <laughs> Having a stack of like seven or eight discs to finish a game. Uh, put in disc four. I didn't or... play them, but I know I got hired for a couple of them. And then my very first kind of really cool gig was voice matching Princess Leia for a bunch of LucasArts games. Oh, cool. Great. So, um, and then a series called Droid Works, also for LucasArts. Yeah. So that was kind of the first. But it, it seems like as you've made this transition from from the 90s into the modern era, uh, that you're doing an awful lot of different things. And we can go over some of the, each individual things because a lot of people specialize, you know, in promo or in trailers or a very small amount of people. Um, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people, animation and gaming and things along those lines. And that's that's where they stick. But you seem to have had this tremendous versatility. I mean, how was it that you were able to master all these different things? For example, obviously <laughs> you started doing commercials, yeah. and you started you got a lot of national flight stuff for people like McDonald's and okay, just a small little <laughs> advertiser. Um, how did you get those gigs? Just your agent was like, "This is the person that should be doing it," or no? Actually, I mean, I broke. Where I kind of really established myself first and took a long time to, to kind of, and thank you for the compliments, it's lovely. There's a, so many amazing voice talent that I feel like are doing a ton also, but I got really fortunate. The first thing that I really broke in or kind of got known for was uh, take, you know, Dee Dee from Dexter's Laboratory, which actually started out as a voice match. Um, it, it, it eventually became moved away from that and became just an established character that I was voicing. But initially, I was taking over someone who had just done the first couple of episodes of it. And um, from there, I had a very difficult time lowering my energy level to commercial. <laughs> Took a lot of training and a lot of great people constantly saying to me, your voice is great the way it is. And me not believing them for a second and feeling like I had to put a whole bunch of icing and sprinkles and doo-wops. He was like, oh, yeah, I totally, 
<laughs> I, I was doing way too much and not really just talking to somebody. Mm-hmm. And somewhere, thank, thank God, someone finally knocked some sense into me so that I could learn to just talk to the microphone like it was a trusted friend and figure that side out. But for years, I was really just sort of pigeonholed into a lot of character cool dialect, animation, um, and some video game stuff. And then promos was the next thing that I sort of got really lucky with. ESPN, God bless them. God bless you guys. Um, just kind of picked me out of, of a bunch of auditions through a New York agent at the time um, to be the voice of PTI, pardon the interruption, which blew up into a, a huge show for them, it is still. And then from there got pegged to do the draft live, the NFL draft and some sports center specials and John Gruden's QB camp and all this really great testosterone stuff. Um, Did, just, was that an adjustment for you, or you were, or you were a big sports fan to start with? I was not. <laughs> I, I loved the Dodgers and grew up with baseball, um, but I would not call me a sports head at all. But it was really, I mean, it was great in that they were looking for a unique, the, the specs at the time, I don't know how much, like, how, how fun can we get with this? I'm, the Go specs for at it, the Barry. time, okay, <laughs> the specs at the time for this particular voice were, she's the gal that the guys want to hang out with, drink a beer with, watch the game with, and mm, afterward. Right. That was the voice sound. And I read those specs. I literally remember saying to the engineer, because I didn't have a home studio at the time, I was just transitioning into figuring that out. Oh, my God, how do I sound like that? Like, what do I do with that? With my voice, I don't sound like that. And she was like, yeah, when you're kind of being sarcastic, you know, when you're just kind of being yourself and wry, you kind of sound like that. And I was like, but I'm not sporty enough. I'm not sexy enough. And thank God she said, just just talk. And somehow laid down the audition for Pardon the Interruption, and, and I got it. And suddenly that became, then you started seeing other specs for a while that literally said, we want a gal that sounds like the gal on Pardon the Interruption. Well, hire her for crying out loud. <laughs> and then I'd read on those and maybe not get them. So that was fun. But that's that's Hollywood. But it was it was great. And that and ESPN is the kind of place where fortunately people talk amongst themselves and you kind right. of get pa- passed on to do you know recommended for other things. So promos became the next thing, and uh, God bless his soul, Don, Don LaFontaine. There is an actual amazing iconic story about that at Davis Glick where he. I was peeping around watching <laughs> him because I recognized the voice. But again, this is at a time when there it wasn't all over the internet yet. Yeah. And you didn't necessarily put together faces and names. But I heard the voice and I peeked around and the engineer went, You could come in. And I was like, And he goes, <laughs> Come on in. And so I kind of sneak into the booth at Davis Glick. This is now DG Entertainment, but at the time it was called Davis Glick. And and he's doing. He's running through like a series of stuff for I think it's TNT. It's Schwarzenegger. T- yeah, yeah, TBS or TNT, <laughs> one of those, Turner Network. And uh, and suddenly Don goes, "Who are you?" <laughs> Looking right at me. I'm not sounding at all like him, so I'm not trying to match him. But big booming, you know. And I like froze and looked at the engineer, and the engineer said, "This is Cat. She was doing some Cartoon Network stuff next door." And Don said, well, don't stay there. Come on in here. <laughs> so the next thing I know, I'm standing next uh, to him, and I'd never seen to picture. I'd never seen that happen before. And again, that we didn't have a lot of behind the scenes of celebrities doing stuff yet, so I didn't even know what that whole thing was. And I said, oh, that's cute. They've got a, tel- they've got a TV there. I guess I thought it was for his entertainment or something. And he says, well, that's what I'm matching. And he explains it they were rewriting scripts for him at the time so he was killing time (laughs) and the next thing i know after he ran through a james bond marathon he said um why don't you go ahead and give it a shot to picture and everybody was humoring him because it's done he's done yeah so uh i i did it a few times and and he said don't try to sound like me do do you do a james bond marathon the way you would do it and i started doing a sexy british spy voice out of fear <laughs> and um and believe it or not one of those ended up becoming they actually kept one of them and i got said so don kind of got me my break and i sent him champagne to his agency as a thank you Boy, he was he was like a real genie for a lot of people wasn't he george yeah oh man very generous hearted 
Big and time. I didn't know him well at all. I didn't know him. I, when I first met him, exactly the same thing. There was no web presence at that time. This is 2005, I think. Yeah. And so the first time I met him, I had no clue who he was. Yeah. I was sent there to, to deal with his buzzing microphone. <laughs> and my friend that sent me, Steve, who was an engineer, his name is Steve Napshin. You may have worked with him. Oh, Steve. Yeah, yeah, now he's in Hawaii. Yes, he is. He sent me over there because he was tired of Don calling him with Hilarious. problems. He was like, "Can you help him out?" He's got... <laughs> and I didn't know who. I didn't have a clue who he was. And sure enough, same deal. He went into the booth. Second, I heard his voice. Oh, oh that's who that guy is. You're that so that's cool. Guy. I didn't know you had a story with him too. That's Everybody really has awesome. a story with Don. That's so great. Really, really fortunate. Yeah. If you're just joining us, boy, you've missed a lot already. Uh, our Guest is Kat Cressida. She does everything. Voice over. And uh, if you've got a question for her, throw it in the chat room. Jack Daniel's supposedly in there. And he will uh, yes, he is. forward those questions to us. And I'm sure you have many because this is a lady who does a lot of cool different things. And I'm sure you have lots of questions about that. Um, They're all looking at the IMDb. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that you do, and you, you mentioned it earlier, uh, is celebrity matching. And we've had a few other folks on here. John Bailey does a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, does a dead on uh, uh, Christopher Walken. It, it's amazing how he does that. But, I mean, he, you, it's like, what's oh, Christopher <laughs> Walken? How does he do that? Uh, and uh, But you've you've got a list of people that you've been doing these things for. How did you get into doing that type of work? Um, I mean, interestingly enough, as I relate earlier, I guess I was kind of doing it, and I think this is true of a lot of people, I was doing it without knowing it was a thing. Um, I so wanted to sound like Wendy and Peter Pan, lovely Catherine Beaumont, and I still wanted to sound like Snow White and Cinderella. and So I was doing that all growing up, you know, playing with it. And when I was a Disney cast member, because I was on an attraction where we were required to know all the stories, um, Storybook Land. We were mm -hmm. like on a little mic and running the boats. <laughs> oh, I really man. wanted to be on Jungle Cruise, but back then <laughs> females weren't allowed to do that. Oh. Um, but I was driving to and from Anaheim every day, again, against my parents' wishes. <laughs> <laughs> the rogue. Um, but... I spent a lot of time listening to the narrated stories, which would have little clips of the original talent. And again, this is this is back when cassette tapes were were the thing. But I was always imitating them. And when I started in voiceover, and people were talking about it, and there were some amazing women who were already doing it. Of course, Tress McNeil and um, Mary Kay Bergen, God rest her soul, um, who I, I took a class with. Actually, she was wonderful. Hmm. Um, that's when I started to learn that there was an actual craft to it and a science and a need for it. And that kind of led to um, my first gig, which was the Princess Leia voice match for LucasArts, and then Dee Dee, which was originally a voice match. And then shortly after that, um, for I did some Alice in Wonderland for Walt Disney Records as a voice match, which was like a dream come true of Catherine Beaumont, you know, <laughs> amazing Disney voice, iconic. And then Jessie, the cowgirl, um, which I've been very blessed to do for, for a while now whenever wonderful Joan is not available. So that was kind of the, that was the gateway. Right. And that, and, and what that is, is if, say, a celebrity is it does a film and they are, they're not available to, say, change a line. Exactly. Or, you know, the censors say, you can't really say that or something like exactly. that. Exactly. And they've got it. Not that there are censors anymore, but <laughs> crying out loud. Shows you, you know, talk about dating yourself. Uh, the, well, but, and, yeah, but they need someone to fill in that voice, and it's got to match almost perfectly. Yeah, and actually more, so that's ADR and looping, and mm -hmm. which is a whole other amazing skill set that some people just, that's what they do full time is, is looping, of course. But more specifically, I was doing it for the video games because they weren't going to be able to afford some of the amazing celebrities that, um, or for the what they call ancillary products for Disney character voices, all the parades and sometimes right. attractions and records and toys and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting stuff. Which, by the way, yes, just to geek out for those of you, which is different from impersonating. Um, I was going to mention that. Right? Yes, there's a lot of people that Im imitate or impersonate. Impersonate versus voice matching, yeah. and the way I usually describe it is when you impersonate, you need. A lot of skills, it doesn't have to sound dead on, 
you're not trying to trick the person into thinking that you're that person. It's more for humor's sake to make a point or to be funny or exaggerated. You know, certainly Schwarzenegger had a ton of people in Jack Nicholson and, as you said, Christopher Walken, for humor's sake. Um, voice matching, it's sort of the opposite. You're supposed to disappear. You, you should not be able to detect at all. And therefore, a lot of times you get these crazy situations where, like, it comes up for Angelina Jolie a lot when when I've gotten to call back or, or final to producers. You know, she doesn't sound that way. She's sexier. Well, actually, that that is how she sounds. Yeah. But people, they're so used to sort of seeing the combined image with her the, voice. The glamour with, yeah, of course. That, sure. um, That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, so oftentimes the voice doesn't sound anything like how you would picture them to sound and therefore would not be a good impersonation. So you bring right. along like a cardboard cutout of Angelina Jolie <laughs> mask, right? And you, do, you strap that on and then you, you the do the, you, with the big lips and then you do the part, right? And but interestingly, I'm, <laughs> I'm thrilled that you said that out loud because one of the first, no, 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 here's how we're going to flip it. One of the first things I was taught in voice matching was put on the mask. Put on the mask of the talent. How do they purse their lips? How do they, where does their mouth go? Do they talk out of the side mm, of their mouth? Yeah. If you picture that you're talking through the mask of that actor, it does help the voice match a lot. Wow. Physicality is very, very important with any it, character. Yeah. You know, and it's, and if you're matching, I mean, you know, you can't do Nixon without doing, I am not a crook. It just doesn't work. You know, I am not a crook. It doesn't sound like Nixon. I've never tried to do Nixon. Well, I, I was no, just I giving an example. <laughs> Presenting, you know, a metaphor. To well done, help Smith. That, well, thank you very much. Been My chair, by the way, is slowly. It's, yeah, we're slowly rotating yeah. around here. <laughs> I feel like. Take a little bit of grease off the bearings okay. here. Yeah, you look fine. Don't okay. worry about it. All right. Give well, her a spin. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm going to be facing the, the green screen. The, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Kat Crescent is our guest, and again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room right now. She is just biting at the bit to answer those questions, and we'll get to those right after these important messages. So stay tuned. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stay. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All right, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, you know, since the beginning of time, uh, Harlan Hogan's been one of our sponsors here with voiceoveressentials.com. And one of the things that he's really featuring, and George talked about it last this week. He talked about it a few a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and we talk about it a lot. It's this little guy. It's the mixer face. Isn't there he, he cute? Is. He's a little cute guy. If you remember the the mic port pro, which turns your any microphone into a USB microphone, this is the next generation, and they've been working on this for like five years. And here it is. Uh, takes two mic inputs, phantom power. It has all sorts of gizmos and all sorts of cool things that you can use to record not only with USB, but also on a iOS device. So unlike the MicPort Pro, this thing will plug right into your iPhone or your iPad or, and I think also on any Android Windows device. Windows and Linux. Outstanding. Yeah. And it's got a few extra little features. It's got a high pass filter on it. You can set levels. You can do... You know, you can monitor yourself, which you really couldn't do that well with the MicPort Pro. You can, yeah, you can adjust the blend of yourself with Some, if you're on Skype else. or Source Connect. Yeah, you can adjust that. Blend. Absolutely great for podcasting, things mm -hmm. along those lines. But the the cool thing is, is that it's self powered. It takes a battery, you charge it up, and you can take it anywhere. You don't have to worry about plugging it in. You know, it's always like I got to be able to plug in this to that yeah. and. That this thing is self-powered. But here's the most important thing about this. Harlan Hogan has them. 
and you can get them for a limited time. Uh, and uh, you, you, there, there's a very limited stock on these there. Uh, they're only thirty four ninety nine and three forty nine ninety nine. Three forty nine. I would three, buy a hundred of them at three forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, three forty nine ninety nine, folks. <laughs> and uh, but the thing is, is they'll ship them free anywhere in the continental U.S. So if you want one, if you've been waiting for one of these for five years, like I have, get one now over at VoiceOverEssentials.com. And there's a great video that he's got uh, over at VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, you go over to VoiceOverEssentials.com forward slash content forward slash Mixerface hyphen unboxing. Oh, there it is right there. Go I'm there. Glad you and you said out loud, though, for yeah. all the podcast listeners. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So uh, you'll be able to watch a, a video of Harlan unboxing it. You've seen George do it. Now watch Harlan Hogan do it. And uh, you can get yourself a Mixerface over at voiceoveressentials.com. And, of course, the best place to get over there is over at voiceoveressentials.com. Another easy way, go to the bottom of our page, which is down there somewhere underneath us. After the show. After the show. Wait till after the show. And click on the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his Portabooth Pro, and it will take you right there, letting him know that you heard it from Dan and George. So thanks, Harlan, for being there with Voice Over Essentials and for bringing us the mixer face and for just being a cool guy. We'll be right back. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Our guest is Kat Cressida, who does everything uh, in voiceover. I mean, it's just an amazing gamut of stuff that you've done. I mean, and, and it's actually pretty impressive. I mean, I, I like to think that, you know, I came out of radio and I've been able to do a lot of different genres. But you do everything except what I do, which is e-learning. Have you done any e-learning? Of course. Okay, good. So <laughs> she, even, she even does that. Well, it's a blast. Yeah. You're actually, and you're doing something lovely for people. Right. And you're working. Yes. <laughs> even <true>. more important, <laughs> you're working. Uh, we got a couple of questions here from our voluminous audience. Uh, T-Man asks, how do you take care of your voice? It sounds so fresh. Wow. That's what a lovely compliment. <laughs> well, you're really getting it tonight. Everybody's just showing you the love. Thank you. Um, I don't think I do anything all that different or special from sort of the common sense things that you're taught early on, which is don't scream after hours. I lose that battle when I go to Disneyland or Dodger Stadium. But, um, drink, you know, a lot of drink, a lot of water, have a lot of the soothing things. Um, I did a <laughs> I did a session about a month and a half ago for a. Uh, Really cool kids horror movie that's about to come out. I don't think I'm allowed yet to say what it was, but I was lucky enough to be in a room full of all the top sort of horror voice people, people uh, famous in our world for mm -hmm. doing horror voices. Right. And um, and I was one of the few females, and we literally spent nine hours straight s screaming, shrieking, every ghoulish, scary sound. And we all were passing around all of our, like, you know, Asian syrup treats and drops and swapping. <laughs> yeah. It was like it all was hilarious. Special, all your special tinctures. All of that right. stuff. So um, did you go? In, did you go home with anything new? Oh, I didn't see that one before. I need to get the, one of those. There were drop. There were these great honey drops that yeah. I hadn't seen before. That yeah. that I definitely was was sucking on for days afterward. And I unfortunately after a session like that, I did sound like Demi Moore for about a day and a half, which was cool. <laughs> But um, quick booker for yes, yes. quick put yeah. me on something where they need a husky voice. But it's really it's a great question. But I'm really not doing anything so magical or special other than I I'm very quiet on weekends. That's one thing I've learned is to really let it all rest and heal, especially if I've had a lot of video game sessions the week before. Yeah, and, and how, how many sessions do you do in a week uh, for video games? Whatever comes totally up. Totally, yeah. yeah. I mean. It could be very, very mellow and just a few little fun things here or there, or it could be a week of right after right after that gig. Then I had something for uh, I guess, all these NDAs we have to sign. I'm not allowed to say anything out loud, but talk around it. I'll talk around a big fantasy game. Did a bunch of scary characters for that, and then right after that had to do a really cool. Oh, I can talk about that. The Jack Ryan project just dropped on oh. Alexa Skills. Very exciting. Wow. Lead spy on that called it's called Jack Ryan, colon November morning, wow. and it's a really cool audio 
they do, they won't call it a game, but it's like an audio experience where you're playing the game to a sort of an interactive story. interactive audio cool okay, thing. Cool. So it's an ele- <laughs> it's an ele- it's an it's an Alexa skill. It so literally you, you just do a, you, it's an audio choose your own adventure. Is that right? I. I I mean, it's it's a Jack. It's the first in a series of these Jack Ryan things, and it's a spy thriller. And yeah. you're you're the lead character being trained to be a spy, and I'm like the lead badass spy who's putting you through your paces and very, a lot of sarcasm. I, I kept saying during the That's session, cool. "Do you want me to sound that bitchy?" I'm like, <laughs> yes, we love it. Yeah. Um, but it was really cool. It's it's kind of like the next wave of entertainment where you can be you know stuck on an airplane and just playing. Again, it's not called a game, but it's like a game. It's all audio with sound effects and music and that's awesome. different characters that's like interacting. It's a new genre. It yeah. sounds like it's a new genre. Yeah. It's really that exciting. sounds really cool. So, but yes, that, that was a week where there was like, and I remember saying to my agent, why can't we just spread, you know, I'd like to spread all this out a little bit. Right. Because, yeah. you know, next week we'll probably be dead and I'll wish that I had had, be able to spread this all out. So, <laughs> but if well, you're lucky, the ups and take down. what it comes. Right. And, but if you're doing a lot of different stuff and you're qualified for a lot of different stuff, you end up doing a lot of different stuff. That's a great question. I would just say yeah. common sense, and if it feels wrong, it probably is. Right. And back off of it. And um, I never smoke cigarettes, except for if I've got a voice match where I know that that's going to be important to the sound. Once <laughs> once or twice a year, I'll sneak a couple of puffs before something knowing. Well, one or two cigarettes isn't going to change your voice that much. But, it does know. temporarily, though, for the... It's, it's all up gives here. gives just the right amount of... Mm. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some of those matches. Yeah. George, you have a question? Actually, I wanted to ask one more thing about the voice. Um, did you ever have to learn a new technique to do a character? Because if you didn't, you knew you were going to destroy your voice in the process. Yeah, that's a great question, Because I remember George. hearing the lead singer from, um, uh, oh, come on, Dave Grohl. He had to get training to learn how to scream the way he screamed. Like his style of screaming, he does a lot of... Singing, yeah, yeah. he does a lot of screaming, and he had to get coaching to learn to do that, so he could sustain it night after night. Wow! Otherwise, have you ever had to to do that? Get coaching to learn a, a technique? Yeah, absolutely. So twice I can think of where it did come up professionally. Once was for Jesse the cowgirl learning to yodel. Oh. They, they had one song in particular where they really wanted me. I didn't have to be a full on. You know, yodelers, that's a real skill, dropping yeah. hot, uh, up and down within an octave and, and having that cool flip sound. But I needed to get close enough, and I went to a, a singing coach for a week yeah. to learn how to get closer to that and at least how to keep shifting b- between my head voice and my chest voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another time, I called up a really amazing voice talent, male voice talent, because I had to do a lot of screaming for a demon thing. Yeah. And and I knew that there was no way I would make it through the four hours. And he taught me something really cool where I gently, and I, I don't know if it works for everybody, and I had to keep playing around with it, but touching just the right place on the larynx, which would relieve the pressure but allow it still to connect and make the sound. But I guess the difference is because you're manually pressing, you're taking the pressure off of the muscles or something. Makes sense. And mm. anyway, it, it was brilliant because it... it got me through i probably looked like i was really esoteric doing this the entire session but it really helped lift and um and he was great in teaching me that and then you know watching things early on watching a couple of sessions in dexter's laboratory it was like the all-stars of voiceover to be thrown into that room with all of those talent rob paulson jeff bennett frank welker tom kenny was one of the first things he did chris cavanaugh cats who say i hope i'm not forgetting Wow. Just amazing, amazing, you know, all stars and watching them do different things, pulling at different parts and <laughs> and then going home and going, oh, so that made that kind of, oh, I see that that's how you got that. Or so you you play with your just play with everything. <laughs> see, play with everything. There you go. There you go. Be the rubber face. <laughs> um, this is a good question. Yeah. You. And you had another one about uh, the union. Yeah, I mean, what was the what was the gig that got you into the union? Was it a kind of thing where you joined first to get the work, or did you have a gig that transitioned you into the union? Oh well, remember I was I was doing on camera first. Oh yeah, of course. So I think the thing that I got tapped heartly on was actually when I was, I mean, it's not the usual story, but 
but it's a good way to do it. I was the assistant production coordinator in one of those TV movies, and they suddenly needed a girl for the lead character. It was like a, a, a throwaway joke, but they needed a girl to literally just land in the guy's arms, be landed a kiss on, and then thrown away. Yeah. That was me. I got to be the girl kissed and thrown away by the lead hottie. He was the lead on Baywatch. He was cute. Can't remember his name. Billy something. Anyway, I anyway, I got Taft Heart lead for that. And then so the next time was a Folgers commercial where I was a must join. And that was very traumatic at the time. I was like, what do you mean? Now I have to pay. This is how much it was back then. $680. Aww. Aww. <laughs> but this Jeez. is. But that's when you're Taft Heart 20 years ago. Yeah. We don't have to go down the rat hole too far in the union stuff, but just a couple terminology things. What does it mean to be Taft Heart lead, first it's of all? It's a great question. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't okay. mean to no, get all okay. Some yeah. people know what it means. Some people, but... some don't. So yeah, yeah. Taft Heart lead is when uh, you're lucky enough to be, for, for whatever reason, circumstances line up that they feel that they cannot get another actor, either right then and there, which was the case for where I was, or you have some unusual talent, skill set, or someone's being awesome and having your back and figuring out the paperwork. Uh, the term comes from a, a it's, I think it's a law. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're basically being forgiven so that you can sort of sidestep into the union temporarily to do that one job. You're forgiven and you don't have to join. But the very next time you ever do a union job, it's now logged. And then you're a must join. And that means, did I, so was Taft Hartley uh, explained that, well? Ex, okay. That's exactly how it is. And it just kind of sits there in the background, kind of like lurking as if you had got a prior or something. And then <laughs> the moment that you land your, your next legitimate union gig, whether it's SAG or AFTRA, then they'll go ahead. And I actually just helped an actor through this process. It was cool to be on the phone hearing it all from the union side as well. But they will, again, allow you to do that second job not yet technically being in the union, but you have to come up with a payment plan, which they now have, which is lovely, oh. or um, or pay up front, and then you can do that next job. And they give you, like, it's either five within five days of the booking, you have to pay it all off, or you can commit to um, a payment plan to, to then. Excellent. Thank you. That's actually one of the most thorough explanations. <gasps> I have heard nicely done. I didn't know it's about either the a must. Compliment or a... No, I didn't know what the must join process. Oh yeah, uh, with the payment plan and all that stuff. That's good to know. They yeah. they they're really on it too. They take it very seriously. And if yeah. you show up to the job and you haven't dealt with it yet, you're not going to be allowed. The, you're going to be sent away or sent to the back room to figure it out fast. Mm. They take it very seriously. I imagine they do, but very professionally explained. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Fred North asks, do you have a prep routine for commercials, animation, voice matching, etc.? Different routines for different types of things? Or you just show up, give me the script, and, and it happens? No, I wish I were that. I, I, I probably do. I don't think of it as a routine, but I, another really... These are such good questions. We have a all. brilliant audience. What you can I say? You Emmy audience? Um, so if I know... Okay, if I know that I've got to lay down... Commercial, promo, narration, and animation, like if, if I've got a handful of auditions that I'll have to go, I will start with the most low-key one first, which is going to be closest to my natural speaking voice. But I will spend some time, if I haven't been on the mic yet that day, talking out loud to myself, um, asking myself some questions, um, drinking some water, clearing my throat. Sometimes I brush my teeth. I don't know. <laughs> the thing just kind of makes me feel like I'm freshening up and mm. getting ready <laughs> I may be the only person who does that that can actually be good to stop mouth flicks too by the yes. way yes or, or, probably... or cause them too it depends really? on your mouth I yeah. suppose um, so that's what I'll do and if, if I have to go right into animation not having warmed up at all into something then um, usually I'll either start repeating back lines that I've memorized from other things that I like that just kind of get me into the spirit of it. Usually other other actors, characters, not mine. Um, being playful, doing a dialect I really like. I'll just sort of warm up everything. And then I've got those three warm up exercises that I was taught ages ago for Shakespeare and musical comedy that I'll also do out loud, which probably we all know, but gotta, butta, butta, gotta, gotta, butta, butta, gotta. Good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood, and red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather. 
Yeah, I love those. You never do that one. That's like I, that, that's the one I love. No. I'll do those. And that will get me feeling loosened up. All right. Yeah. Jack Daniel has a question. And uh, he usually he's usually here because he's our social media czar. Yeah. But he had to sure. he had to go do a couple of tags or something and he ran home to his studio. But now he's with us. And he says, by the way, I did the tooth brushing thing too before session. Oh, thank you, Jack. <laughs> I'm Good to know. I'm and you met him briefly not, while he yeah, was here. Yeah, he was sitting right there. Yes. So what's that question, George? Uh, you yeah. mentioned earlier that you thought you'd have a tougher time breaking in nowadays because of the competition, casting, environment changes, and et cetera. What do you tell new VOs who want to do what you do? We'll leave it on that. No yeah, pressure. That's going to be the last, the last word. No pressure. Are we going to use the joke that we use? Run. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> If we're being authentic. Absolutely. Okay. So, and this is not meant, this is what I, if someone says, hey, I've got a niece who really wants to break into it, or I've got a friend who, or an actor approaches who's been doing, you know, theater or whatnot. Or I'm told I have a great voice. I have a great voice. Well, that's a whole yeah. other. Okay, that's yeah. a different Because okay. <laughs> um, I, I believe it has nothing to do with the voice. I'm one of those who believe that, because I can't stand my natural. I mean, I listen to myself. Sometimes I accidentally hit like, replaying my own message, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> um, I think it's more about the acting talent and the intelligence and the heart and soul that you bring to your performance that matters and not what your voice sounds like. Unless unless you are born with one of those fabulous, you know, gritty, awesome texture whiskey voices, but that's a whole other. I usually say to people who say, I really want to break into voiceover, the first thing I'll ask them is, why? Why do you, why is that, a driving uh, passion of yours. What is what about it? And then I listen, and I try to really listen to what they're saying. And then, depending on the response I get, I, I will go into the fact that a, especially if they have no acting training, that that that's key. And there are exceptions. There are exceptions to all of this. But most people, and it could just be me. Most people who ask me this question, I find don't want to really hear some of the real. They don't want to hear it. They just want to go straight to booking. Making, yeah, making lots of money because that's what Which voiceover is all about. Yeah, I like that too. I would like that too. Um, because as we all can attest, anybody out there, except for with rare exception, there's a lot more gritty, you know, the work work behind the bookings than there is just floating through it and amassing wads of cash. And again, there are exceptions to every rule. But um, if, if the answer is anything other than I really want to bring stories to life, I really love the art of communication, I'm really passionate about bringing things to life or words, anything like that, I tend to then say, well, you may want to try other things first because to do voiceover and to do it consistently and to make a living at it, it's going to require a whole bunch of skill sets that you may not even think or that you may not yet have. Um, and that's that's usually what the person says back to me tells me a lot about what to say back to them after that. Sure. Is that at all help? I Absolutely. Yeah. Helpful. Makes total sense. Um, but yeah. if you've already passed, you know, checked off all those boxes and you've got a lot of acting training and improv and you've done some singing or some something on radio or and you know what that's about and you're learning, you're saying, now what do I do now that I'm there? Then the next response always is, don't listen to anybody. Don't take any anybody's guff. Don't take any guff. Jeez, how old am I? That's, about a, that's, a, that's a 60s word. Don't take any guff. Don't take any guff. Yeah, 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 more of a 50s don't, word. Don't take anybody's crap. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter if you don't have the right sound or you're not the sound that's in vogue now or you don't necessarily sound like X, Y, or Z. If you love it and you've checked off those boxes and you've got some training, just keep keep going for it because I do think the wheel comes around for people who stay persistent at it and keep working at it. And it's some some people it happens right away and then nothing for ages. Some people nothing for ages and then boom. It happens all differently for different people. And if you really love it and you're passionate about communication, I think that you will find your way through it. Just on a side note, I mean, just thinking about some of the 
rock stars who were really huge when I first was coming up into it. And I was with ICM at the time. So there were some amazing uh, people, um, <laughs> really huge people. But their sound was so not what today's sound is. Um, and you have to also keep learning how to evolve with the new trends right. and the new sounds and paying attention to what's going on. Well, Kat, thank you so much for being You're with so us. Welcome. It goes by so fast, doesn't it? I'm I'm good. Thank you guys you. were amazing. We try. You guys were awesome. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming down. Thank you, sir. Kat Cressida. All righty. We'll be right back to wrap things up here on VoiceOver Body Shop right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All righty, as we fade into reality here on VoiceOver <laughs> Body Shop. Um, thanks again to Kat Cressida for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. Great information and, and fun talking to her. Um, next week on this very show, a good friend of ours, a, an Englishman in New York, Peter yes. Bishop, mm -hmm. who is currently now the president of World Voices. Hey, congratulations, and, Yes, uh, he'll be here next uh, next Monday night. On ten eight, Melissa Motes. When you say here, is he going to be physically here? No, he'll be in New York. He's going to be in New York? Okay, yeah. we'll have him on Zoom then. Yeah, we'll have him. He got, but he just has such a wonderful voice and such an attitude. And a heck of a brain. And a, a smart guy. Came out mm -hmm. of corporate management to be in voiceover. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's why he's good at what he does. Uh, Melissa Motes will be here on the 8th. Awesome. Uh, she'll be joining us from Las Vegas. On the 15th, Adam Werner will be joining cool. us. Right on. Cool guy. And All then people I know. On November 5th, even though it's a little bit ahead, a little bit after Halloween and after the, right right before the elections. Um, we have a live concert right here in my backyard here at the Voiceover Body Shop with Solly Canto, our good friends Rosie and uh, Brian oh, Amador yes. That's and their daughter is. have a wonderful Latin band, we're going to do a live backyard concert Holy here. Holy cow. We're going to broadcast that I might that have to live. get here more than two hours early. Yes, well, it's only, it's like three pieces. They set up three mics <laughs> and a sound system. It sounds awesome. I'm yeah, excited about that. We're going to have a great time with that. Very cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, again, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, you can talk to George at... GeorgeTheTech.com. And you can find Dan over at... HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Mm -hmm. There we are. It's <laughs> it's in there somewhere. We swear to God, we know exactly where you go. We are professional. That's right. All righty. And let's see. What else here? We're live here every Monday night, almost every Monday night, except the prior two Monday nights. Uh, if you'd like to be here in our audience, all you have to do is write to us. If you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area, like John Flood was tonight, hit the audience cam. See if John Flood can be seen here. It's, it's kaput. Frozen. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those nights. At least you're watching, which is which is more than I can say for some other things. Um, Jack's backpack. Yeah. <laughs> Jack's backpack is I still need, here? I need to plug something. Okay, go for it. I'm doing a uh, voiceover for, well, actually an audiobook narrating uh, workshop for folks that have to self-produce ACX type project for john florian over at voice over extra that's right for john so that's going to be uh it's a tuesday and a thursday i think the 25th and the 27th of september so you still have some time to get in on that and you can sign up over at voiceoverextra.com it's all about part one's all about recording and editing part two is more about the mastering side of it which and is, you can take one or the other or right. both take both you know so it, it'll save you a lot of time the whole point of this is to get you where you need to go much more quickly. 
don't don't just do it by Googling. This is going to get you yeah, down the road. Yeah, you got to hear it to understand. Or maybe you'll do this thing and go, you'll, you'll watch this and you'll go, uh, hey, never mind. Yeah. I'm not going to do audio <laughs> books. Forget let, let somebody it. Somebody else do that kind of stuff. <laughs> so go check that out. And I also have a podcast. We, we you guys know you've listened to the Pro Audio Suite podcast. We really geek out and we interview engineers and producers and stuff in the world of audio, not just voiceover. All right. Uh, the show logs. If you want to hear every word that was said, or at least find what was said, Jack DeGoli is out there writing every word down that we say, and he will present that with the show notes when we post the show later today mm -hmm. or early tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Usually, I'm usually still in my pajamas when I make sure it gets posted. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you want to join us here live in the studio, like John Flood was supposed to be able to wave and say hello... All you have to do is write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. Tell us what week you want to be here and write in the subject line audience. And then That's I'll right. know what you're talking about. Uh, show us your booths. Whose booth was this? This one I'm very proud of. This one is Allison Packard's studio, which I designed Beautiful. and had, you know, we had built uh, about two years ago or so. And it's a really neat space. What you can't see off camera in this corner, there's a loft. So oh. she can hang out out there and chill when she's not recording. Was, was, this the, was this the one that was built on the pad? And uh... yes, it's oh, a, basically a tiny house. <laughs> that we that's the studio. Yeah, Very nice. So that one's really cool. All righty, and let's see here. We need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials and Voiceover Extra, uh, Source Elements, Vo to Go Go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Well, we also need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Our great producer gets his great guests like Cat Cressida, Catherine Curridan. Thank you, Catherine. Hey, Catherine. She's on a bike trip somewhere. Awesome. And she's still doing her job. Uh, Jack Daniel on chat room duty, even though it be remotely. And, of course, his help on YouTube. I'm getting that uh, working for yeah. us really well. Our technical director, who is working very hard. A trooper, as always. As, oh, as always, Sue Merlino, uh, Jack DeGoli for the show notes, and, of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, not an easy business. Mm -hmm. But you hear from the people that are successful and what they go through. Hopefully that will inspire you. And, of course, if you need help with your home studio, that's what we're here for. That's what the show is about. Because if it sounds right... It is right. All right. Close enough. Yeah, whatever. Okay, that's going to do it for us this week. We'll see you next Monday night with uh, Peter Bishop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body Shot. Or V-O-B-S. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now.